All right, thank you guys. The Spurs take on the Sixers, and that's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern start time on Friday, January 7th, 2022. Happy Friday to you. The weekend's finally here. Now, Philadelphia is the seven-point favorite at home with the total at 216.5. And, and if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks on my channel that I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for a membership on my website at brockpage.com. And I'll tell you what, following yet another losing day of premium sports picks on that website, uh, I'm not feeling too great about the premium picks, but we did manage to improve to 10 and 5 in our last $15.99 daily best plays on that very webpage. And the good news is we have another $1.99 daily best play going off here this evening. And the link for that pick is in the description section below. So we're looking to turn things around here, uh, although I've been horrible over the past couple of weeks, uh, down about 4500 bucks. But anyway, we're going to look to turn around. I'm feeling good about the picks today. And if you're still a little bit on the fence about getting a package on my website, just keep in mind we currently have over 800 members we're signed up and active on that page right now. And when it comes to this particular uh, ball game here, although the Sixers have uh, themselves a couple of guys on the COVID slash injury report, they're still on a five game winning streak and they successfully covered the point spread in five out of their last seven. The Sixers allow only 106 points per contest and they're currently the top 10 in defensive field goal percentage at home. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, Joel Embiid's averaging over 26.5 points per contest, along with double-digit rebounds. Now, the big man's also drilling nearly 40% of his shots from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Tobias Harris is averaging over 18 points a night, along with seven rebounds and three assists. They're squaring off against a Spurs team who lost four out of their last five themselves. They gave up 119 points on average in those four losses. The Spurs are also going to work here tonight without Young, McDermott, White, Johnson, and Vassell, as all of those guys are currently in COVID protocol. Meanwhile, Walker and Kasach are also questionable to play due to the virus. But even when they're mostly healthy, the Spurs are winning only 40% of their road games, and they currently find themselves in the bottom 10 in points allowed per contest. Now, San Antonio is also in the bottom five in defensive rebounding as well. When it comes to the total in this one, the Spurs have gone 13 and 7 to the under on the road this season. Meanwhile, Philadelphia on the other side of things are 67% to the under at the Wells Fargo Center. I'm going to lean toward Philadelphia minus seven in the under 216 and a half. Next matchup, it is going to be Jazz versus the Raptors, and that's going to be a 7.30 Eastern start time. Toronto's minus 11.5 with the number at 221. Now, the Raptors are currently on a four-game winning streak, and they've been really good covering the point spread here recently. As a matter of fact, Toronto successfully covered the number in 11 out of their last 13 ball games, and that's good for 85% during that particular stretch. Now, defensively, the Raptors have been pretty good in that area as well. They're allowing only 104 points per contest on their home court. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, Freddie Van Fleet is dropping over 21 points a game, along with four rebounds and six assists. Now, Freddie's also been dangerous from beyond the arc this year as well. He's drilling 41% of his three-pointers. So look for uh, Freddie to heat up here tonight. He's having a pretty good season thus far. Meanwhile, Pascal Siakam, he's averaging over 20 points a night himself, along with eight rebounds and four assists. They're taking on a depleted Utah team who's going to work here tonight with a, uh, without a bunch of their impact players. Conley, Gobert, Bogdanovich, Ingles, and Mitchell, they're all sitting this one out here tonight due to COVID or injury. Meanwhile, O'Neal, Clarkson, Whiteside, and Gay, they are questionable to play this evening as well. Uh, a lot of guys on that injury report. Uh, a lot of guys out. A lot of guys potentially not playing. So keep an eye on that injury uh, list if you're looking to fire on this game tonight. And I'll tell you this much, even when they're mostly healthy, 
The Jazz have actually had a tough time covering the point spread here recently. They failed to cover in seven out of their last 10 ball games, and they've averaged only 105 points per contest in their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings with Toronto. So all those these guys have been outstanding all year. There are a few problem areas, maybe a few areas of concern if you're looking to fire a wager on this game. Now, total-wise, Utah's 11-6 to the under on the road this season. They also went 60% to the under in their last 10 outings at any location. I'm going to lean toward Toronto, minus 11.5 in the under, 221. Next matchup, it is going to be Bucks versus the Nets, 7.30 Eastern start time. Brooklyn is minus five with the total at 232 and a half. But despite being favored by a few buckets here tonight, the Nets have struggled to cover the number here recently. As a matter of fact, Brooklyn's failed to cover the point spread in their last four straight. And they also went just four and 15 against the spread in the Barclays Center this year. Now, surprisingly, the Nets are making only 32% of their three-pointers in Brooklyn they're not shooting the long ball very well in front of their home crowd. Uh, they're actually in the bottom three in the association in home offensive three-point percentage officially. Meanwhile, defensively on the other end of the, coin, uh, the, other end of the court, uh, these guys have struggled to get rebounds at home as well. They're currently in the bottom five in home defensive rebounding officially there. So a couple of problem areas for Brooklyn backers. Brooklyn squaring off against a Milwaukee team who wins 60% of their road games this year. And they also got the W in six out of their last eight ball games at any location. Giannis Antetokounmpo is averaging nearly 28 points a game, along with 11 and a half boards and five assists. Meanwhile, Chris Middleton's dropping 18 and a half points a night himself, along with five boards and four assists as well. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks are currently in the top five in the NBA in road scoring. They're also in the top three in offensive rebounding. Meanwhile, on the other end of the uh, court here defensively, Milwaukee's also done a real nice job in guarding the three ball this year. Now, when it comes to the COVID report, Hill, Holiday, Connaughton, and Allen, they are all in quarantine. And when it comes to the total in this one, Milwaukee saw contests with Detroit, Dallas, and Cleveland fall under the posted number here recently. They also saw nine out of their last 10 meetings with Milwaukee stay under the posted total as well. Meanwhile, the Nets on the other side of things are currently 63% to the under on their home court. I'm going to lean toward Milwaukee plus five in the under 232 and a half. Next matchup. It is going to be Timberwolves versus the Thunder, 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Minnesota's minus 5.5, totals 217. But despite being favored by a couple of buckets on the road here, Minnesota lost five out of their last eight ball games, and they're also winning just 41% of their road games. Now, the T-Wolves have struggled defensively when traveling this season as they're allowing 114 points per contest in their away games. They also find themselves in the bottom 10 in the association in defensive rebound. <laughs> Tried to hold that one in. I've been sick for like two straight months. No, it's literally, I, I got sick before the Monday before New Year's Eve, and I am still just a fountain of boogers. But uh, anyway, uh, they're taking on a Thunder team who successfully covered the point spread in their last three straight. And they also went 80% against the number in their last 10. Shea Gilgis Alexander is averaging over 22.5 points a game, along with four boards and five assists. Meanwhile, Lou Dort is scoring over 16 points per contest himself, along with four rebounds. And speaking of boards, OKC is currently in the top five in the league in offensive rebounding. They're also covering in nearly 70% of their home games. Now, injury wise, Favors and Roby are out for the Thunder. Meanwhile, for the Timberwolves, Bolmaro and Wright, they are out for them. When it comes to the total on this one, Minnesota's 12-5 and five to the over on the road this year. And that's good for 71% in that category. They also went 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with Oklahoma City. Meanwhile, the Thunder on the other side of things, they saw contests with Sacramento, New Orleans, and Phoenix uh, recently get over the line themselves. 
I'm going to lean toward OKC plus five and a half in the over 217. Next ball game. <coughs> of course, forgot the water. Uh, next ball game, it is going to be the Wizards versus the Bulls, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Chicago is minus six and a half with the total at 225 and a hook. And speaking of the total in this one, Chicago saw two out of their last three fall under the posted number. Unders against the likes of Orlando and Indiana during that short span. Meanwhile, the Wizards on the other side of things, they saw unders against the likes of Houston, Cleveland, and Utah recently themselves. And when it comes to selecting a winner in this one, this game's actually being featured as my $1.99 daily best play on BrockPage.com. We are once again 10-5 and five in our last 15 picks in that very category. So if you want to see whether I like the Wizards catching 6.5 on the road, or if I like the Bulls laying the points in front of their home crowd, there's only one way to find out, and that's to sign up for my $1.99 daily best play on BrockPage.com. And I'll tell you what, guys, if you end up signing up today for just $1.99, not only are you going to get access to my daily best play every single day all the way through the end of January, the math actually ends up working out to be just $0.08 cents a day if you pay the $1.99 today. That's a uh, certainly exceptional value. It's, uh, it's almost like, like free. <laughs> $0.08 cents a day. I mean, that's crazy. That's lunacy. You'll never stay in, a guy like me, you'll never stay in business selling stuff that cheap. But anyway, as far as making a free pick goes for this contest here, I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the under 225 and a half in that ball game. All right, next matchup I have for it, it is going to be Mavericks versus the Rockets, and that's going to be an 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Dallas is minus 2 with the total at 215 and a half. But despite being favored on the road here, Dallas has a bunch of key guys on the COVID list. Thomas Burke, Porzingis, Cauley Stein, and Boban, they are all sitting this one out due to quarantine. Meanwhile, Luka Doncic is battling an ankle, inju uh, ankle injury, excuse me, and he's been downgraded to doubtful. So a lot of guys on that injury report, a lot of guys not playing. And even when they're mostly healthy, Dallas is playing just 500 basketball on the road this year. And they're scoring only 104 points per contest. These guys have really struggled offensively this season. The Mavs have also struggled shooting the long ball, going just 32% from beyond the arc this season. They're taking on a Houston squad who's coming fresh off a victory over Washington, where they scored 114 points. Now the Rockets also, uh, they got seven out of their 11 wins on the season at home. So although they haven't been winning much this year, the majority of their victories have been on their home court. And they're actually in the top 10 in the NBA in shooting the three ball in front of their home fans. Eric Gordon's drilling 46% of his three-pointers this season, 14 points a night for E. Gore. Meanwhile, Christian Wood, he's scoring over 16.5 points a game himself, along with double-digit rebounds. Now, injury-wise, Brooks and Sengen are out for tonight's contest. When it comes to the total in this one, Houston went 80% of the over in their last 10 ball games, 10 and 7 of the over in their contests at the Toyota Center. Meanwhile, Dallas, on the other side of things, they saw overs against the likes of Portland, Utah, and Minnesota recently themselves. And if you're into historical trends, they're also allowing nearly 117 points per contest in their last 10 meetings with Houston. I'm going to lean toward the Rockets plus two and the over 215 and a half. I'm sure that'll be a popular pick. All right, next ball game I have for you. It is going to be Kings versus the Nuggets, 9 o'clock Eastern start time. Denver is minus 7.5 with the total at 226. Now, the Nuggets have won three out of their last five ball games with victories over the likes of Houston, Golden State, and the Clippers during that stretch. Now, Denver's also done a really nice job uh, defensively this season as well as they're allowing only 103 points a night at the ball arena <coughs> now scoring wise Nikola Jokic is averaging over 25 and a half points a game along with 14 boards and seven assists and as a matter of fact 
The Joker is currently second in the NBA in rebounding per contest. Meanwhile, Will Barton is scoring over 15 points a night himself, along with five rebounds and four assists. The Nuggets are currently in the top 10 in the NBA in offensive field goal percentage. Now, they're taking on a Sacramento team who lost six out of their last nine, and they also successfully covered the point spread only three times during that span I just mentioned. Now, aside from their struggles shooting from the foul line, the Kings' biggest problems have been their defensive play. Sacramento is currently in the bottom five in defensive rebounding on the road, and they're allowing nearly 118 points a game away from their home court. Now, the Kings have also gotten the W in just six out of 17 row games this year. When it comes to the injury report, Holmes and Maytu are out. Davis is questionable. Meanwhile, for Denver on the other side, Green and Naji are questionable. Howard is out. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, Denver's 60% to the under at the ball arena this season. They also went 6-1 and one to the under in their last seven ball games at any location. Meanwhile, Sacramento saw a contest with Atlanta, Dallas, and Golden State here recently fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward Denver, minus 7.5 in the under 226. All right, sliding into our next ball game. It is going to be Cavaliers versus the Trailblazers, and that's going to be a 10 o'clock Eastern tip-off. The Cleveland Cavaliers are minus 5.5 with the total at 218. And despite their current skid, the Cavs still have a winning record away from home. And they also find themselves covering in over 72% of those road games. Now, Darius Garland... Uh, Offensively, he's scoring nearly 20 points a game, along with three boards and seven assists. Now, Garland's also been pretty good from beyond the arc. He's making nearly 40% of his three balls. Meanwhile, Jared Allen's bringing down double-digit rebounds per contest, along with 17 points a game. Now, the Cavaliers are currently in the top 10 in offensive rebounding on the road. They're also in the top 10 in offensive field goal percentage away from home as well. So, Mostly their defensive play has been highlighted this year, but they are doing a few things right offensively as well. Now they're taking on a Portland squad who's fallen to nine games below 500, and they're going to work indefinitely without their stars. Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, they're both out indefinitely with really no return in sight. Meanwhile, Cody Zeller is questionable to play. <coughs> and Larry Nance is out as well. I got to get some water. Give me one second. Wrong way. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so even when they are mostly healthy, we are looking at a Portland team who's playing horrible defensively this season. Portland's dead last in guarding the field goal. Dead last in guarding the three ball as well when it comes to covering the point spread. Portland failed to cover in seven out of their last ten ball games. Now when it comes to the total in this one, the Blazers' last three straight did get over the posted number. Portland also went 60% to the over in their last ten meetings with Cleveland. Meanwhile, the Cavs on the other side of things, they went 5-1 and one to the over in their last six themselves. Overs against the likes of Memphis, Indiana, and Atlanta during that stretch. I'm going to lean toward Cleveland, minus five and a half in the over 218. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Hawks versus the Lakers. That's going to be a 10 o'clock Eastern start time. L.A. is minus three with the total at 228 and a half. Now, the Lakers have been playing some pretty good basketball here lately. They're currently on a three-game winning streak, and they successfully covered the point spread in four out of their last five. Now, Los Angeles also plays their best basketball at the Crypto Building, and they're averaging nearly 113 points a game there. LeBron James is averaging over 28.5 points a night, along with seven rebounds and six and a half assists. Meanwhile, Russell Westbrook's getting 19.5 points a game himself, along with eight boards and eight assists as well. 
Lakers are currently in the top 10 in shooting from the field. They're taking on an Atlanta club who may be going to work here tonight without Collins, Bogdanovich, Young, and Johnson. All those guys are listed as questionable. The Hawks already lost six out of their last nine, and they successfully covered the number in just three of those contests I just mentioned. And speaking of covering, the Hawks are covering in only 40% of their road games this year, and they're allowing 112 points a game when they travel. Now, total-wise, four out of Atlanta's last five ball games got over the posted number. Meanwhile, the Lakers went 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine themselves. They also went 61% to the over at the Crypto Center. I'm going to lean toward the Lakers minus three and the over 228 and a half. <clears throat> and with that, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into our quick pick recap powered to you by my website at brockpage.com where we are currently 10 and 5 in our last $15.99 daily best plays. <coughs> I like Philadelphia minus 7 under 216 and a half. Toronto minus 11 and a half under 221. Milwaukee plus 5 under 232 and a half. OKC plus 5 and a half over 217. I like the under 225 and a half in the Washington Chicago game. Give me Houston plus two over 215 and a hook. Denver minus seven and a half under 226. Cleveland minus five and a half over 218. And with my next and final free pick for the video, I like the Lakers minus three and the over 228 and a half. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. If you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, just keep in mind, you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a membership here today on my website, you're going to get access to that content all the way through the end of January. Uh, I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. And if you guys want to get access to every single pick that I give out on that website, you're going to want to think about getting my board member package where board members get access to every single pick that I give out on that, on that website all the way through the end of January as well. Uh, like I said earlier, guys, we're really struggling on that site. I'm down a couple, th what is it, like 4500 bucks already to start the year. Uh, I'm getting my ass beat. Um, my picks have been terrible on that site. So maybe you want to hold off until we start to get hot a little bit. I don't know, but I, I got to, you know, at least let you know I suck. And if you want to see my record, um, it's on the homepage on brockpage.com. It's the first thing you see. It's right on the homepage. Just scroll down and you'll see how bad we've been, you know, over the past, you know, 15 days or so. It's been pathetic. But anyway, you know, if you're still interested in signing up, I'd love to have you. I got to imagine we're going to turn this thing around. I'm feeling great about my plays today. And we always do bounce back. I mean, it's very rare that we get into a slump like this. But when we do, we come back, you know, really, really, you know, with a vengeance. And we win a whole bunch of games. So take it or leave it. It is what it is. Most importantly, guys, I got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys... Happy uh, Friday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.